Hey everyone, there is a new summary out from the INDV in Italy about the supervolcano Campi Fligre. It's basically a yearly bulletin that gives us statistics and graphics, how we can see how things escalated this year and when were the worst month. But also I want to start this video with something that's kind of, well, makes you a little bit emotional and it's also sad. The residents of Pozzuoli, we know this is the area with all most of the epicenters and that's the area, that's the red zone that will be affected should there be a phreatic eruption or even worse. So thousands of flowers were thrown into the Pozzuoli dock. They say this is a symbol of the fight against Bradycism. Bradycism translated, it's the volcanic crisis that Naples and Pozzuoli is facing and that's gradually escalating. So they have basically gone to that port that is dry now, used to be a fishing port, but because the land has been rising so much, the water has been pushed out and it's basically grass growing there, bushes growing, but there's no water anymore. There's no floating fishing boats that can go in and out of that port and that's why they have thrown the flowers in there because this is the most visible symbol of the current crisis. There was a time, and it's not so long ago, when colorful fishing boats floated peacefully in the water. And in recent years, due to this increased rate of uplift, currently we still have 2.5 centimeters a month. It has remained that high. The sea now in this port has been reduced to a swamp, and that's a symbol of how the Italian press writes about this, the local press, they say it's a symbol of Brady Sizem in the Campi Fligri, the super volcano considered among the most dangerous in Europe. And then they further say, we're talking about the Pozzuoli dock, which until recently, as its name suggests, was a small fishing port at the foot of the Rione Terra. I have reported about Rione Terra that has been actually evacuated in 1970, forcefully evacuated. Um, Rione Terra is Pozzuoli's ancient historic center. It's being renovated right now as a tourist attraction, but in 1970, when there was a volcanic crisis. I don't want to say Brady seismic crisis because this is a volcanic crisis, guys. Um, a military came in to remove people forcefully. It was quite the drama. From this dock, they say, they see Rione Terra. From this visual and tangible symbol of Brady Sizem, the merchants of the Phlegrean city wanted to symbolically start over this morning. That was the report about what they did. It's a nice gesture, but it's kind of sad because we all know in our hearts this is not what's going to help them eh, to fight off this super volcano that's brewing right underneath them. They say it's a symbol of resilience to throw these thousands of flowers into the sea, a symbol of resilience against the constant earthquakes and the rebirth of the Campi Flegri super volcano. This is how they were wording it. They say the flowers are the symbol of resistance and rebirth. They say from here we want to start to valorize our land, our beloved city. And after they had thrown the flowers into the port, they hung a banner with the words that said, every flower is a root that has resisted. It's hard to resist a super volcano. That's the problem. Um, but you know, for many, this is the only thing that they can do. Let's switch over to the yearly summary, to the yearly bulletin. And I want to show you this graphic, the blue graph with the bars. And, and you see one bar definitely stands out. And that was February this year. Um, coincidentally, it was also the same month where we had the crisis in Santorini. But Campi Flegre was also massive. 2,549 earthquakes. It was going on for weeks constantly. And then two other bars stand out at the end of the year, and that is October, November. And I'm very curious about December because we had a lot of earthquakes in December. And this also comes with this increased uplift rate. So there's more pressure building up. 
in the crust if something's rising and it's basically causing this land rise it's pushing it's like blowing up a balloon a balloon you can only put that much air in until it starts to break and eventually then plop but it gets more brittle it reaches the point of maximum elasticity these rocks are starting to break that's why we see more earthquakes and with this land rise being constantly up at 2.5 right now of course there's more unrest and uh, hopefully we will not see another four before christmas but the volcano did this the most active phase was around december january february last year so we will have to see what happens so what else are they telling us in this new bulletin so they say during the month of november so just last month 876 earthquakes with a maximum magnitude we all remember this magnitude 3.3 and 750 of these events, that's 85%, were in the Campi Flegrei area, Pozzuoli, where the Sulfur Tower is, where these Fumarolis are. 710 of these earthquakes were, that's 81%, were located mainly between Pozzuoli, Agnano, and the Sulfur Tara Pischiarelli area, Bagnoli, and the Gulf of Pozzuoli. The depth were basically shallow between zero and three kilometers. That's roughly 2.5 miles. Maximum depth was 3.7 miles, roughly five kilometers. So they're very shallow. That's why people feel them so intensely. Even if they're only for the supervolcano, that's a lot, 3.3. And they're telling us that late August 2024 to mid-February 2025, the main uplift rate in this area was basically a centimeter per month. But then in February, it went up to three centimeters per month. And then it was basically leveling up to 1.5. But now we, for quite a while, we already have it at 2.5 that started in october 10th so october november that we see these increased bars this crisis started in november 2005 and they're telling us that since then how much did the land rise and that's the size of a person and that's why in Pozzuoli there is no water anymore we're approaching basically a meter 60 that's a smaller no, not too small, but it's a person. A meter 57.5 centimeters, so it's basically you taking two steps. That's significant, and of course now they see what the result of that is. And since January this year, a large portion of this happened just this year. 20 centimeters of that happened this year, guys. So this is a lot. So this year definitely has escalated things even further than it has escalated it last year. And then this first, when you read the sentence, it sounds like a good thing. They say the maximum surface temperature values um, in Pischiarelli and Solfatara areas show stable trends. Yeah, stable trends, right? In that same with the geochemical parameters. And if you look at this yearly summary, they're giving us that for Vesuvius, for the Fligrean fields and for Ischia. And you see Campi Fligre is in the middle and it's it's yellow. They, they say yellow alert level. They say average imbalance monitoring parameters above baseline values. And that's where they're showing us these graphics. So we will have to see. I don't even want to say what the new year brings because the old year is not over yet. And we will have to see what December brings. I'll show you the current list of earthquakes. We basically have earthquakes every day, sometimes a break of one day, but we just had another magnitude 2.3 on um, December 7th. So we still see these earthquakes in the higher magnitudes every day. And guys, higher magnitudes for Campi Flegre. Of course, this is not a magnitude 5, 6, or 7. We will not see this hopefully at Campi Flegre. Um, Scientists think the maximum that could be produced is like a 5.1, 5.5, something like this. And that would be 
devastating for the city of Naples because of the buildings, how they are built. But we will have to wait and see, guys. But there's so much else going on. The strong earthquake that we just had in Japan, 7.6, guys. And is this connected? If we look at the Ring of Fire, lots of earthquakes in a close proximity time-wise. Um, is there a connection? Are they shifting and moving the Pacific Plate along the Pacific Ring of Fire? Very, very interesting topic. I'm looking into this for you guys in detail and I'll explain it to you. We have Taiwan, we have Japan, we have Kamchatka, and we have a 7.0 in Alaska that just happened a few days ago. What's causing this? Is there a ripple effect? Yes or no? I'm sure you want to know that. I see you there in a second. Thanks for watching.